This is John from InfoHut. Today's tutorial is on an iPhone 5 rear housing replacement. I've also provided a screw chart that you can print out in the description below with a list of tools required and a link to where, where to purchase them on Amazon.com. So please feel free to print that screw chart out as it'll help you when you do uh, put the phone back together and you'll know exactly where those screws go. As you can see to the right, I've got my replacement shell and here's the phone that the, of the one I'm replacing. It's pretty bashed around. I'm just taking out the SIM card with the SIM ejector tool or uh, you can use a, a pin. Now with a pentalobe screwdriver, all you need to do is remove the two bottom screws. Now with an iSesimo opening tool, you'll see I'm just prying it open in between the frame and the screen from the bottom up and then it flips up. Make sure you flip it the way I do so you don't ruin any cables in the screen. There we go. Now there's three screws there with a Phillips head screwdriver. You just need to remove those screws. And there we go. Now the cables connecting just pop up like Lego. There we go. One, two, three. There, and that's your screen disconnected. Now obviously I'm going to replace the whole screen, but let's put that aside. Now we need to disconnect the, the plate that holds the battery in. So there's three screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. You just undo them. As you can see, it's very simple. Then the plate pops up and the second plate pops up really easily. Now I'm disconnecting the charging port cable and obviously the battery connector there. Now I'm just going to pry open the battery and it lifts off. Now if it doesn't you can use a hairdryer, a bit of heat to make sure that it does uh, pop up. Make sure at the top you see I uh, indicated the top cables that you don't put anything sharp around there. Do not pierce the battery, whatever you do make sure it's something that doesn't pierce it. Now with a flathead screw you've got about three screws that you need to take off. First, I'm just unplugging that aerial that just pops up. Now you've got one right there. Phillips head. Sorry, not Phillips head. Flat head. And that pops up. And just adjusting it. And the second one pops up there. There's only three of these flat head screws. And the third one at the top. This one's a bit of, bit tricky because it doesn't come off easy as it's not magnetic. So you'll probably have to use tweezers or your fingers to pull it off as it won't stick to the actual screwdriver. Now with the Phillips head screwdriver you need to take out uh, the remaining screws. Essentially what we're doing here is removing the logic board. Now you'll see a screw that I'll take it out eventually. The plate removes from the top there and we disconnect the power button. That just pops up like a piece of Lego. We got one Phillips head screw there. We got a second one here. Now you can pop up that cable but Usually if, you, if your screwdriver is small enough, you can squeeze it in between and unscrew it and it'll just sit there. I like to do it that way. It saves us a bit of time. And that, that cable above it, it does pop off. So if you want to take it off, you can. Now at the top, we're going to take out the remaining screws and there's just two there. There we go. And now the logic board should pop up fairly easily. Now watch how I flip it to the left and then right in there you're going to see that there's a little 
cable that disconnects, that's your Wi-Fi cable. So remember to put that back in when you do put it on new housing. So here's the new housing. When you do purchase it, make sure you purchase housing that has a new uh, has everything included. It just makes life a bit easier and it's about three or four dollars more. So um, make sure that when you do pop everything in, see I almost forgot there with the Wi-Fi. You connect that Wi-Fi, it just pops in, clicks together. Now put everything under the cables. So we got the power that I connected. Now that screw, it should be still be sitting there. I'm just putting it back in with the Phillips head so it secures the motherboard. And you'll see that this job is just putting taking screws out and putting them back in. There's nothing very technical. I'm getting that top plate. Putting it in position. This will be so easy when you print off and use the screw chart. Putting those two Phillips head screwdriver screws in that, that hold that plate in. And when you use the screw chart, you're just putting stuff exactly where they should go. Two Phillips head screws at the top. Now I'm going to connect the uh, cellular aerial. And it's being a bit difficult. It can be a bit true. Don't force that in because you don't want to bend the the, uh, the actual cellular antenna there, even though it's a very cheap part. Now I am putting the flathead screws in. The, the only reason they can be a bit tricky is because sometimes they just don't stick to the screwdriver well and not the most magnetic screws out there but once again it's just putting screws in i'm having a bit of a bit of a tough time trying to put them in there we go and we got the second one there's only three three of these so you just have to make sure that um you put them in all together because it just makes it a lot easier and the one at the top That one's not magnetic, so I just got a tweezers and just held it in and spun the, the case around. And we put in another Phillips head screw. Connect that charging port back in place like a piece of Lego. In this case, I'm using a brand new battery because I wanted to upgrade the battery. I'll also put a link in the description where you can get new batteries. It's, it's handy to do that. Now, I'm using double-sided tape. You can use uh, a, a contact type adhesive as long as it doesn't set hard and there's a bit of flex in the, the, the actual glue. You can use any type of glue really. You just don't want it rattling around in there when you do put in the actual battery. Uh, so um, I always like to secure it down. And I'm just popping that in place. And it should just go in like a, once again, good example piece of Lego. making sure nothing's popping out. Now, here we go, I'm gonna put the plates back on. As you can see, we're pretty much 90% of the way back to putting the whole phone together. Once again, referring to the screw chart, you'll know where the screws do go. So please print it out, putting the final Phillips head screws in, securing the logic board. Now connecting the screen and then finally the plate that holds the screen and then there's going to be three Phillips head screws. It seems like somebody tampered with this already and there was only two in there so um, I had to find a third one but, but everything's fine so there you go. Finally you just have to make sure that you turn on everything on, test it. When you do test it remember that the rear housing comes with a new charging port, audio jack, mute button, volume button, so you need to test all of them to make sure they work. And once they do work, you can pretty much um, close and secure everything, put the SIM card tray in, and that's all done. So once again, thank you for watching. 
If you do like this video, hit the like button below if you have any questions. Feel free to drop a comment below and please subscribe as I'm going to have more uh, tips and uh, tutorials on how to actually